G'day guys, um, Dr. James Simcock here from Vet Dojo in South Paws. Um, you might notice that I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt today because it's uh, Freedom Friday here in Victoria, Australia. We're very, very happy to finally be let out of our, our world-breaking lockdown attempt. Um, and so that's the first day of freedom for us and um, we're all quite excited about that because it now means we have some ability to go out and um, spend some time with our friends and go out to restaurants and do all those normal things. So very excited about that. Um, so today I just wanted to have a quick chat to you about a case that I had in this week um, which was a young dog that had a double pelvic osteotomy and I just wanted to show you some of the imaging beforehand and afterwards and just talk to you a little bit about um, the selection criteria that I use for choosing cases um, that are appropriate for a double pelvic osteotomy and just wanted to show you what the CT scans look like before and after and, and actually showing you how much impact we can have on the morphology of the hip joint. So. Um, I'm going to spin you around and we're going to look at our CT scan um, that we've done. So this initial image that we're looking at is the preoperative CT scan and I've measured up um, the dorsal acetabular rim angle here and what I'm looking at is the angle that this makes um, with a reference um, to kind of the pelvis here. And the angle, the dorsal acetabular rim angle that we're getting in this um, left hip is about 20 degrees. I haven't measured it on the right um, side just to give you an idea of what that looks like without the um, the uh, calibrate or sorry the, the measuring markers on there. Um, but what we're looking at is that kind of steep angle here. And basically, in a dog um, when we're selecting a candidate for this procedure, 20 degrees would be a good candidate. In some of these cases, when that angle is actually less than that, so if it's more like this angle is down here at around about kind of five or six degrees or even less then those dogs actually wouldn't make a good candidate because those hips um, are actually already um, quite close. So we don't want to try and achieve any more closure than that. The other thing that helps my planning um, from the CT scan is once I've measured this dorsal acetabular rim angle of about 20 degrees or 21 degrees, um, I need to then select the appropriate plate that I'm going to use. So the plate I used in this dog was a 25 degree plate. The plates generally come in 20, 25 or 30 degrees. Um, and what I generally do for a double pelvic osteotomy is take the dorsal acetabular rim angle before surgery and I add on generally about seven um, degrees or so um, to get the plate that I'm going to use because what we find is because the pelvis is still attached um, at the ischium, when we actually rotate um, to 25 degrees or whatever the size plate is that we're using at the osteotomy, as we come further caudal, we actually get a little bit less effective rotation. So in this dog, um, we measured 20, 21 degrees, we put on a 25 degree plate, and then what we actually got in the post-op period was, um, oops, that's not the one I'm looking for, this one is the one I want, is an angle that was lower and about six degrees. So we can actually look at these kind of side by side here. So we can see that um, our angle has changed. So the reference marks are basically the same. The pelvis is a little bit skewy from this view here, but we can see that our angle has changed here and we've got six degrees. We actually did a bilateral procedure um, on this dog. And so on the other hip, we can see that that angle is much closer to kind of zero there. Um, and you can see that that effect between the, um, the post-op images on the, the left of the screen there and then the pre-op images on the right. And so changing that morphology, actually tipping that um, acetabular rim over actually gives us better ability to kind of capture the femoral head um, and make these dogs a lot more stable. So one of the controversies around um, dogs with um, hip dysplasia at a young age is actually when they would be a good candidate for performing a DPO surgery. And this is something that's quite controversial. And our selection criteria here is, is pretty stringent. So they have to meet a few different selection criteria. And, and often a CT scan is probably the most you, um, you know, useful test for us to establish a lot of these different things. So the first thing is that when we're looking at these dogs, they often present with a lameness. Second thing is that um, they will have an Ortolani sign on palpation of the hips. I don't pay too much attention necessarily to the angle of um, reduction and subluxation. What I'm more interested in is actually looking at the distraction index. We want to check that they've got a distraction index of less than 0.7. Um, we want to look at this CT scan and really get a sense for is there any pre-existing arthritis or not. If there's no arthritis, then they're a good candidate. The other thing I look for specifically is around this dorsal acetabular rim right at the point here, is there any blunting of that or is there any evidence of remodeling? Because that's one of the earliest places that we'll start to see remodeling. And sometimes when we're filling these guys for an Ortolani sign, if they have a nice crisp Ortolani sign, um, then they would make a good candidate typically because they haven't got a lot of remodeling and, and damage to this um, dorsal acetabular rim. 
if they have these dogs and it's a fairly soft, or what we say is soft Ortolani, or it's hard to kind of palpate, it doesn't feel very like a distinct clunk, what you'll find in those dogs is that they've often got some remodeling and they'll actually have quite a blunted appearance to this sort of dorsal acetabular rim. And so in my opinion, that means that there's already too much arthritis for them to be a great candidate for this procedure. So um, the arthritis on CT scan is a big thing. If there's any degree of arthritis, then I won't actually perform the DPO procedure. I prefer to treat them medically um, and then at some point consider doing a, a hip replacement in the future. So the big ones for me, just to recap there, uh, the age, less than 12 months of age, um, generally, they're going to present with a lameness. They'll have a positive Ortolani sign on palpation. We then look at doing imaging. You can do some of this imaging on x-ray, but I think the CT scan is more sensitive. Um, we're looking for any degree of arthritis that's present. We're looking to see if there's any blunting of that dorsal acetabular rim. We then measure the dorsal acetabular rim angle um, to try and get an impression of um, what size plate that we would need to use and, and make sure they're appropriate. We're also going to look at the distraction index and make sure the distraction index is less than 0.7. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. Um, I'll try and put up some more uh, videos around these kind of topics, just a bit of background and information. Um, if you have any kind of feedback for us on topics and things you want to hear about or learn about, then just let us know. Um, hopefully you have a great day and a happy Freedom Day. Talk to you later. Bye.